we're back. Yep. And if you're joining us right now, we're just getting our second conversation for this morning started. And as we mentioned before the break, uh, we are talking all about the reopening of the Museum of Belize. And joining us for this discussion, we have in our studio Marilyn Young, who is the interim president of Niche, uh, along with uh, Ilona Smiling, who is the curator of the Museum of Belize. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And thanks for joining us. This is a really exciting topic. Yeah. Um, let's start by talking a little bit about uh, the history of, of the museum and, and what it means for, for it to now be reopened after for so long. Uh, okay. Ilona, you can take that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, of course, the museum used to be a prison. Mm -hmm. And um, in 2002, it was handed over to Niche and they decided to turn it into a museum. Mm -hmm. So it has been operating as a museum for all this while. And of course, when we had the pandemic, everything shut down. So we've been closed for almost 18 months now. So this past Saturday, it was actually the first time we were reopening after all that time. Mm -hmm. And um, in order to reopen, we had some assistance as well from the minister and everyone, you know, chipped in. And we had a wonderful art exhibit opening up for the museum, which was by Pen Caetano. Mm -hmm. And the museum celebrated its 20th anniversary, anniversary yes. on oh, Saturday wow. as well. This February is the reopening 5th. we should all be talking oh. about, right? <laughs> 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 Rather than the other one. But, mm -hmm. you know, this, this 18 months is a long time. And I think when, when people look at uh, activities that we've missed, um, this, is, this has to be something that people have been looking forward to, to be able to go to the museum, see artwork, and have that experience once again. I'm yes. sure there's a lot of thought and planning that went into curating this opening, reopening exhibit. Yes, yes. Um, we definitely took the downtime during the pandemic to do a lot of um, construction work to fix up the museum. And actually this art exhibit that we're doing, it's on the second floor and it's the first time that we're having such a large scale art exhibit at the museum. Mm -hmm. um, I know that I've done, I've curated a couple art shows at the museum, but the room was, you know, always very small. So everyone didn't really get to experience the artwork as they should. So with the reopening, I really pushed to have the entire <laughs> upstairs be cleaned out from everything just so that we could have a fully functioning art gallery for the first time. Yeah. And the thing is also, Marlene, is that even though we went into a lockdown, mm -hmm. um, it was not only the lockdown, COVID, that had us um, keeping the museum locked up all this while. Um, as a new board, when we visited the museum, um, we were completely shocked as to how the museum looked, um, the molds, you know, the, the, the conditions that they were working in. Um, when it rained, they had to move things from one side to the other side. AC was not functioning. And so with the, with the assistance of Minister Fonseca, the Minister of Finance as well, mm -hmm. um, we were able to, to allocate some funds and it cost us a, about $100,000 in reference to construction work, the roof, the siding, mm -hmm. the interior, the AC, um, just to demold the, the, the whole museum. So when because you go it's in, brick, yeah. Yes, yeah, so yeah. you have to, because it's, it's really, I would walk in there and I have allergy conditions and within, within five minutes, my voice will be gone, I'm getting congested. Mm -hmm. and, and so um, we also, during, during this time, have also been working with Miss Smiling and, and other people to ensure that we get it ready so everybody can walk in and into a healthy museum, if you want to put it yeah, that way. Yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, this is this is part of, of I'm sure, the work that you have been doing. I, mean, I, I want to talk a bit about the renovation work at the Bliss. Right now, we're talking at the museum. Uh, we see there the space that you mentioned, Ileona, the, um, it's larger than it used to be before, you said? Um, no, it's actually the same size, but we had, a, the, we had the Mayan exhibit upstairs, but due to some of the damage that we had with the roof, we had to remove most of the objects from upstairs and put them into safekeeping. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you work in museums, you have to understand that the atmosphere that you keep needs to be good because anything can damage your artifact, your artwork. Mm -hmm. So that was very difficult if you know. And moisture is, is, moisture is, is always yeah. an issue, <laughs> yeah. So 
when um, when the new board came in, I was extremely vocal about these things because we we are there at the museum. It is our job to safeguard and safe keep every single thing in the museum, and yeah. I can't do that if I'm working on the <laughs> horrible conditions. Yeah. So I was very happy when they stepped in and I told them everything. No, so the the space is the same. It's just that we cleared it out and I made room. I converted certain galleries just to have more space to display the paintings. To display the work. Yeah. And you know, the, and, and, and speaking of that, you know, for, for some of our viewers who don't, um, who may not know or who haven't visited the museum yet, you can talk about what there is in there, you know, because um, mm. in terms of art, artifacts, you mentioned the Mayan mm -hmm. exhibit just now. So uh, give us like in a nutshell what, what, what we can <laughs> expect. So right now we have on display, we still have on display the Enslave Exhibition, which speaks about the rise and fall of slavery in Belize. I believe that has been one of our more successful temporary exhibitions. Yeah. Um, it has been I mean, there's no way you walk years. past that cell and you yes. don't get, you yes. know, your jaw drops to the floor. Exactly. Yeah. So we still have that exhibition up and running. And like I said, upstairs, we have the Pen Caetano exhi Exhibition as well as the Birds of Belize exhibition. Mm -hmm. It's a taxidermy exhibit. Um, all the birds were provided by Dr. Zitzer in partnership with the Audubon Society. So we are constantly changing And for people our who exhibit. don't know what that is, that's live birds that have been... Uh, well, yes. Uh, <laughs> birds that were once live that have been stuffed. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. So, and yeah. the, the technique that he uses is incredible because the birds are pristine yeah so yeah. but don't freak out though. but he didn't kill them <laughs> no they, they no, were donated no. yeah. yes yes um so yeah we're we are going to do more exhibits in the future we still mm -hmm. have two more exhibits that we're planning throughout the year which i personally love i i always feel that we need to do more shows that revolve you know yeah rather than just having one exhibition say forever maybe every six months we get to change these exhibits so we do have two more that we're planning so yeah. please follow us on <laughs> facebook and instagram look out for that now pen caetano i mean his work is amazing he he moved back to the country what over a decade ago mm -hmm. um after a great career in in europe mm -hmm. and so let, let's talk a bit about the selection yeah. um of him as as your reopening artist Yes, well, this collection he did while he was in Germany from mm -hmm. 1990 to, to 2010. Mm -hmm. So we have almost 87 paintings, and I think I put up almost 80 of it. So everything that you're seeing was what he did while he was in Germany. Germany yeah. And what I tried to do with this exhibit was to put themes on it. So I have um, early style, then we have style development, um, within his artwork, he, he paints a lot of cultural and traditional scenery. Mm -hmm. One of them is the cassava making. He has different, um, the, the different processes in cassava making within the artwork. So we have an entire gallery dedicated to cassava making, mm -hmm. another gallery dedicated to the spirituality side. He has a lot of paintings that talk with Dugo, so we give we gave a lot of yeah. context behind that so that you understand what it is that you're seeing. Yeah. One of the things that I did not want is that for people just to come in and just see the paintings, but not understand what's what happening. They, yes, what's happening within the paintings. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's, that's exactly what we did. We have some items on display. There's also an area that talks about him as the king of Punta Rock as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. So walking Look through the that. museum is, is not a five minute or 50 minute yeah. experience, yeah. you know, it's, it's going through like what Ilona says and you, you can enjoy each space, each room is a storytelling um, environment, you know, mm -hmm. so it's something that you can walk in and, and the, the literature that they've put up as well make it easy for anybody to understand what you're looking at when you're going into that, into that yeah. space, you know, so you can understand the story behind the painting. Now, the, the work that's gone into reopening, as you mentioned, there was, you know, our resources needed to restore it. Um, and now that you're open again, we know a big part of the income was generated from tourists who would visit. Um, let's talk about how you've been able to cope. What's, what's the rebound like for, for business at the museum? Because that has to do with your sustainability, of course. 
Well, we still haven't fully opened as yet. We're okay. hoping to fully open to the public this Wednesday. Wednesday tomorrow. Mm -hmm. it's so we're, uh, I know that it's going to be a bit scary because we're still in the pandemic. And, uh, you know, we're used to having day days in which we have maybe 100 to 200 people visit the museum in a day. So we can't do that anymore. Primarily cruise ship visitors, right? Um, you'd be surprised how many Belizeans do come in, okay. especially on the weekends, you know. Okay. So I can't say that it's only tourists, but our people, ver they're very much interested in coming yes. to the museum as well. But, um, you know, the p entire pandemic situation will most definitely affect how many people we can allow in the building. I believe that we're probably looking at maybe 50 Mm. that could come in there at the at even any given time so mm -hmm. so you may be doing like scheduled tours yes, like you book definitely. your one hour slot or is one hour enough to see everything <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, i put so much work <laughs> <for> one hour <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that, that's a pandemic reality. Yes, yeah. yes, definitely is. But we are trying. We are trying to see what other options that we can mm -hmm. provide. You know. Yeah. So, like Belizeans, um, we're going to be opening now on public and bank holidays and on mm -hmm. Sundays, which was never before. Oh, nice. Yeah. And so, um, Belizeans can come in free on Sundays mm -hmm. and and on public and bank holidays. You know, and um, again. If you're a family coming in, maybe six or eight of them, we would suggest that you call the museum and, and say what time you'll be coming in so we can try to schedule you in. Because like what Ms. Smiling says, it's, it's going to be a little bit challenging um, to have a lot of people showing up and then we can't facilitate you, but we want to facilitate you, yeah. you know? And yeah. so we've done some, some work on the, on the entrance way so people can sit and, and wait, you know, if they come in a little bit earlier. And um, which also, if you when you travel to Chetamal or any part of the world, you can visit the museums on the weekends. And mm -hmm. so we want people to experience that and Belizeans to take advantage of that um, as well on the weekends because we know people work and we don't want you to be rushing during your lunch break or yeah. after four, you know. So we, we really want them to call in and, and um, especially large families and, and try to arrange appointments and look out for those cruise ships days so you don't plan around those times as well, you know, to try to, to look at the, the crowd control that yeah. will be happening there. Yeah. And um, I know that we're not fully open uh, yet, but um, just so far and, and, and based on, you know, the, the, the ceremony opening, you know, what has the feedback been like just based on the, the experiences that, you know, people have been having so far just walking into the museum and, and, and seeing some of the changes that have been made? <laughs> very positive from yeah. my from yeah. my you know uh f feedback that people have given me everyone's either really happy that the museum is finally opened mm -hmm. or they're happy because we finally allowed pe an artist mm -hmm. to actually take up space within the museum and not just one small room yeah. um i think since i've been working at niche i have been advocating advocating for the inclusion of arts within the museum and i've had some success but like i said it was always within that small gallery mm -hmm. so it has been this dream of mine to really allow an artist to take up such huge space in the museum so i am personally happy <laughs> <laughs> and, and i was surprised right. you know as, a, as an art lover when she mentioned to me that they've never done this before and i go what do you yeah. mean you've never done this before you yeah. know and this space is there we have the artist you know so i, I was happy that she when 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 she came and, and suggested that we we do the pen caetano exhibition mm -hmm. as as part of the reopening and the 20th anniversary mm -hmm. you know it, it it um it was like of course, I mean, what do you mean you're asking, you know? Yeah. And, um, but the response has really been good. We've had people that attended the opening ceremony that um, contacted me afterwards and say, um, what, what are the opening hours? Mm -hmm. um, do we need to make an appointment? Um, I've had a few people mention to me that they're coming in on Saturday, you know, with their family now. Mm -hmm. And um, I've had people also telling me that, um, uh, this third one-year-old young lady, that she didn't even know we had a museum, mm -hmm. you know? And so we want to, to invite Belizeans from the districts to yeah. take advantage of, of the weekends, you know, if you can on a Sunday or public and bank holiday and come in and enjoy it. 
because it is it is really nice to walk in you know um, even if you've never been to a museum try to come and know your own you know because this is something that that you can feel proud of and and again learn the history and miss yeah. Melling is working on on the information again I'm revamping it. She wants to make it look sexier, sound sexier, you know, <laughs> so people can want well, to read I mean, the documentation. Well, I mean, the biggest speech is the conversion of a prison into a museum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy art. <laughs> yes, so people would remember how, because I remember yeah. how the prison looked, you know, um, I'm that old, but I remember how the prison <laughs> looked. <laughs> and and um, it it's always amazes me, you know, and, yeah. and one of the things I want to say is that I'm very um, glad Mm -hmm. that our former prime minister Said Musa had the vision you know mm -hmm. and and at that time Yasser Musa um, was involved with this whole project and and they bring all that vision to, to fruition you know and so for us it's very special those of us that remember how it was seeing it grow yeah. and now 20 years later you can again appreciate it and, and it's clean up and it looks like a, a nice young thing that you can go and enjoy you know yeah. so I, I, I really am um, I really am proud of the work that Miss Smiling has done with it. So the cost of entry is? It's seven Belize okay. and seven US for tourists. Okay, and on Sundays, Belizeans can go for free, that's right. what you said? Right. Just and public, sure. public and bank holidays. We, we like free. Free trigger is a word <laughs> for, for us, for right? For Belizeans, yes. For yeah, us. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and one of the things like you mentioned earlier is looking at the cost of operating, of taking care mm -hmm. of. And these, these are some of the things that we have to grapple with as a, as a board as well, you know, because one of the things that we found out very early was that they, they were not looking at it as, as, as revenue, but I look at it as you need to make enough money to maintain to it, to, to sustain it, to do the regular cleaning of the mm -hmm. molds, um, to ensure, because we, we, where the museum is located is not too far from the sea. Mm -hmm. we, we have hurricanes, we have floods, you know, so we have to ensure that, that the funds is there for the curator to do the work that she needs to do along with yeah. her team you know and and the research needs to be done because these things are deca delicate you know and and so um we we ask people to 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 support us mm -hmm. um and to visit and like somebody say if i go on a sunday and i want to pay my seven can i pay my seven i say nice. sure that's look at it as your donation yeah. to your museum yeah. you know and so um, I think the few people that I've spoken to over the last couple of days, um, and I've told her, they said, seven dollars is cheap, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and yes, it is. But like what Miss Smiling says that we have two more exhibits we want to put in the yeah. museum in the spaces that we have um, before the end of the year or within the next six months. And um, so the more exhibits we put on, we might have a little dollar add on more, yeah. you know, to, to, to yeah. for that space because um, one of the things people asked me um, on Saturday was the insect room. How oh, the insect room, you know? I said, she's working on it. Yes, <laughs> you know, yes. so that is coming on stream. And again, to, to have people come in and work on those and put the exhibition together as yeah. a curator, it's a lot of work, you know? Yes, yeah, it definitely oh. is. <laughs> well, you know, and, and I like the idea of having the day where Belize, some uh, Belizeans can go for free because you do want to keep it accessible. That's yeah. the key thing, you know. Um, families may never be able to take everyone, but on that one day they can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but but speaking of the the work that is ongoing with Niche, we documented last week the renovations that are ongoing at the Bliss Center for Performing Arts. Madeline, and since we have you here, we have to hear <laughs> about what the plan is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, as you know, the the board has taken on a, a big task in 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 um, in trying to. To, I would want to use the word fix up, upgrade. Um, a lot of this, the, the institutes uh, uh, that comes under, under the niche. And so we've started um, a little bit, we started at the museum and a little bit at, at, at ICA, and then we weren't, went also to the archaeological sites. Um, at Bliss, again, we, we, we inherited um, a Bliss that was leaking when it, I mean, not leaking, but water was literally flooding in mm -hmm. when it rained. Um, everything was falling in, the plumbing wasn't working, the AC not working. And again, um, thanks to our minister, you know, he assisted us through the Ministry of Finance. And I have to say that, that I'm very appreciative of the Government of Belize assistance through the Ministry of Finance in assisting us in, 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 in different projects that we've, we've embarked on to, to lift up the, 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 and repair. Because mm -hmm. people, when you pass the bliss and, and you see how it looks, I felt very sad, you know, mm -hmm. that this this is where we've gone to you know and so we we need to invest 
in, in, in bringing it back. We need to push the performing arts. Yes. You know, um, we've, I've missed the performing arts. My daughter was a performer and, and, and I missed the performing arts. And, and we do have people out there, um, dancers that are still working with young, with young kids, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need to, to encourage them to, to continue to do that. We want to encourage our drama people to, to continue to perform. And so we need to create that space for them. That's what we're there for, you know. Mm -hmm. And so we, we really want to, to start and we've been, we've been strategic with it because mm -hmm. the first thing was to stop the leaks. Yeah. And sometimes so it's not you, just an outside facelift. You're working right, on the on leaking the, problem right, inside. Right, and right. And then we, we, the leak was solved, and then they were power washing to do some painting. And then I got a call, Ms. Marilyn, water is going through the walls. Mm. <laughs> so we, we have to stop and then do those repairs again. And again, that was a part of the funding. So you have to find the funding because if you don't stop that leak, partic that particular leak, then you can't yeah. continue. Um, so, so it's a lot of, of these things that you're, you're encountering, you know, and, and I have to, to thank our contractors that are working with us. And um, because, like I said, they would go in and do an assessment and, and sometimes it's more than what you, what you think, you know, and yeah. again, we have yeah. to find the money to do those repairs. And, um, and at the same time, we also want to, to and we are encouraging our directors and our staff to be innovative, also to look at new ways of using the spaces that we are, we're fixing up and, and um, how people can use those spaces and how can they generate revenue from it. Yeah. Because you also want artists, um, and, and Ms. Smiling is, is very passionate about this one, where we want to have um, residency, artists, uh, residency, artists in residences. Uh, art, art, yeah, artists in residences. So we want to create those space, whether it's at the Blaze or at the Houses of Culture. Mm -hmm. And so by renovating it, it's not only for, for the staff, but it's mm -hmm. for the artist community to go in and utilize these spaces, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so that is that is one at the bliss. And internally, um, the the carpet, for example, I, I, I need to go in, you know, and, and I'm, I'm afraid <laughs> I told one of my directors yeah. yesterday that we've started certain things. And now the carpet is where we need to go and lift up and then see exactly what, What's what, happening what is there. there. And, and um, so I have to prepare myself emotionally and mentally <laughs> for some of these things. When and with allergy the medicine, business. probably. Yeah. <laughs> yes, my, my doctor, my doctor will, will probably be calling me later. But that is, that is where um, we, don't, we don't pay attention to maintenance. And yeah. maintenance is extremely important. Mm -hmm. um, the, you look at some of the, like I look at the Houses of Culture one day, in, the one in Belize City here, and um, we're right by the sea. And all the nails, it's a new building, is rusty, mm -hmm. you know? So we have to put in proper things. You just can't go and just put in any nail. You need yeah. to, and even me knows stuff like this, you know? So when you, when you see it, you, you, you get sad because it's money wasted. Yeah. You know, so, but, um, and then the, the other area is the archaeology, mm -hmm. um, the, the, the sites again. Um, we started off at Nohotshen, which is Case Branch. I, uh, some people say you're the only one that refer to it as Nohotshen, but it, it is Nohotshen. Mm -hmm. And, and um, the, the, um, where the tourists travel or where, mm -hmm. where they walk, um, the bathrooms, they were, were, were broken up, tiles missing. There was mm -hmm. a safety security issues. So we've been strategic in, in going in and doing repairs. We, we yeah. can't do everything, but there's, we're starting, start, starting to look at safety and security as a priority area for visitors and for our staff. Mm -hmm. So we did Nohotshen, then we went to Altonha. Now we're at Lamanai. Okay. And then from there, we'll look at Seros and um, San Antonich as, a, as another two that we're going to do some, some work at. Yeah. So the, the pandemic has allowed an opportunity where these places were not in use for you to be able to reset i mm -hmm. should say um mm -hmm. the standards of what they need to be to function right yes. right nice. and and then it, it also and i think as as a board we're very cognizant of the fact that um th doing the budget exercise right now it's maintenance is high on our list of expenditures that mm -hmm. we have to do it um like i was telling miss smiling um the the mold cleaning for example this is not a one-time thing mm -hmm. this has to be done twice a year because you want to not have any molds come so you need to do preventative maintenance yeah. you know and this is what we have to look at overall. So it's a matter of bringing up everything up to standard and then maintain it at yeah. that at that level there. So everybody could enjoy it. Mm -hmm. right. uh, but in well, thank you for that update. And I think people will be happy to see um, the upgrades that are taking place. They can see it at the museum. You said the official opening is 
Wednesday. Yes, tomorrow. 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 Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. I was trying to check too if it's tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to be from 9, nine in the morning four. to 4. Uh -huh. yes. Okay. And mm -hmm. for now, there's no appointment needed, but if you are coming with a big group, they probably should check ahead of time. Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Please do. All right. Well, thank you so much. Anything else? Oh, no, yeah. I'm going to say. Thank <laughs> you so much for uh, coming in and telling us all about the work that you've been doing. I hear you teasing about uh, the next exhibit that's <laughs> coming, so that means we must take advantage of seeing this one now. Yes. What's the uh, length of time you expect this exhibit to be up? This one, I'm hoping it stays up for six months. Six. And within those six months, we're hoping to do a lot more activities mm -hmm. and educational programs along with the artist, Mr. Pen Caetano, as well. And mm -hmm. I have to give them a big shout out. I hope they're doing well to Miss Ingrid and Mr. Penn. No? Mm -hmm. I mean, if we didn't have the painting. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. It was, right. was great timing on, on their yes. behalf as well for the yeah. paintings to be in country at the same time. Mm -hmm. you know, so. All right, well, thank you both for coming in and giving us this preview. We appreciate it. And we hope to see thank you at the you. museum yes. very soon. Yes. 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 All right, we're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, there is a 15K run coming up. It's a Valentine's challenge and also in remembrance of a BDF staff sergeant. We'll tell you all the details in just a few, so please stay tuned.